Hello everybody, I'm going to be going over how to create a very simple menu that uses keyboard, mouse, touch, and gamepad. Um, all input methods, uh, but first I just wanted to, just a little bit of shameless self-promotion because, you know, game devs have to eat too. Um, this menu code is a simple menu that comes from an asset I created in the asset store, which I won't go over in depth now, but you can check it out in the link below. Um, basically, it just has uh, it has a main menu, simple menus, uh, the one we're going to be going over, horizontal menu, um, slider menus, drag, draggable menus, uh, wheel select, and pop up. So yeah, check that out if you're interested. Um, if not, you know, watch the video. I hope you find use with this tutorial, and I hope it benefits you greatly. So menu code can be tricky. Um, a lot of the menu code I've seen is uh, pretty complicated and sometimes doesn't work too well but I think I've found the most effective way to make some uh, good menu code uh, it's really simple and of course you can customize it however you like but this is the most effective base code for all your menus um, that I think I've found it's a universal input menu so it works with mouse uh, touch keyboard and gamepad um, let's go ahead and get started all right, so before you get started, you may want to set up a couple of things. You may need a font menu, so you can uh, name it the same thing I've named it there, on whatever type of font you like. Uh, you need a couple of sounds. You need a sound for switch, and you need a sound for select. Um, we already have a room set up, so all you need is one room, and, and of course an instances layer. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an object. And I'm just going to title this OBJ menu. And in this object, we're going to create three events. The create event, the draw GUI event, and the alarm zero event. Alright, we'll start at the create event. So I'm going to throw some code in here. And, and then as I go along, I'll explain what it does. So this is where we're going to initialize. And we're gonna put this code in here. You can pause if you like and go at your own pace. Um, of course, it explains, I already explains it here with this uh, comment. So the unselected items color, selective items color and uh, VS, which is the vertical space. So this is kind of like the space in between um, the, the, the text. All right, next thing we're gonna do is an array for our menu. So I just have, you can name these menus whatever you like. I just have it option zero through four. And then menu items is the length of this array. So that's gonna be five menu items equals a layer length one day menu and our cursor is zero this is going to keep track of where our cursor is um, next thing that comes along is a variable mouse C and mouse C could either be true or false if it's true that means we're using the mouse if it's false that means we're not using the mouse um, and I'm going to show you how we detect this in the draw GUI event so you're gonna, we're gonna loop through all the gamepad, um, all the devices, and see if there's a gamepad connected. If there's a gamepad connected, then we're going to go ahead and go ahead and set mouse C to false. And then, of course, uh, you can copy these variables. It's going to keep track of our um, mouse position, so it, we can detect if we're using the mouse or not. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is to draw a GUI event. This is where the bulk of our code is gonna go. Um, now, I've seen a lot of things where people say that you shouldn't, uh, I've seen things where people say you shouldn't put um, calculations and stuff in the GUI event, you should spread it out. But I like to keep all of my menu stuff in one event, just because it, it just makes it simpler. And really, there's no performance drop from using um, putting all your code in the draw GUI event. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to declare some variables and this is a lot of code here but this is but this 
um, this coat is going to cover everything that really everything that you need for all your input methods so gamepad mouse keyboard um, touch it's, it's got it all and you can customize it however you like um, this is a lot of code to write out so I'm going to paste it below in the description you can just copy and paste this code and use it for yourself um, some of this stuff could be a little structure a little better So you can all these are these uh, double lines are or so it's just or if you, if you're not familiar with what with the, what that is um, so so I went and we're not going to be doing right or left we're going up and down in this menu so but I went went ahead and put right or left as well now right here you have gamepad access value so this is going to detect the thumbstick in the in the left thumbstick in your gamepad and it says not alarm zero. Now if we get on here, it detects if we've pressed the thumbstick, and then if we have, it sets alarm 0 to 5. So this is kind of a lockout for that, so you're not endlessly scrolling with the thumbstick. There's a little bit of a lockout, so, so you can um, press it like you do the other buttons. And of course you have action, which is just your basic uh, action buttons. Um, you know, left, left click, uh, enter, you know, a, X or, or A on your, your gamepad. Um, and then cancel, you know, it's like the uh, go back buttons, you know, like B or backspace or escape. Okay, so there we have those set up. Then we're going to check if, in this next code I'm going to paste, we're going to check to see if the user is using the mouse. So you can go ahead and copy that, that, um, that code down. So we're, we're, we're pretty much saying um, if our mouse position does not equal our last mouse position then we are using the mouse so mouse C equals true um, and the reason we want to do this is because we don't want um, the mouse position to mess up our uh, keyboard positions and I'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute with that let me scroll up a little bit all right so the next thing we're going to do is if there's any keyboard checked well then we're going to also disable the mouse and if we're using the gamepad we're going to check to see if we're using the gamepad we're also not using the mouse so this just loops through all the buttons on the gamepad and if we're using a mouse uh, gamepad button we're going to set that mouse use to false All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to declare some local variables. We're going to draw the menu and check if, if the mouse is hovering or clicking. So let's uh, go ahead and set our variables first, and I'll explain this stuff as we go. All right, AX and AOI are your anchor positions, so this is where it's anchored on the uh, the GUI page so 350 300 you know uh, 350 over 300 down uh, vertex color and I these are some variables we're going to access and of course you want to set your um, menu type to be what this is right here draw set alpha 1 for XX and YY we're going to use those to uh, to move our, our menu up and down All right, so the next part is we're gonna loop through all the uh, menu items here. If we go back to the create event, you'll see um, your different options. Now, if you have a really long one or really sh or they're all really short or, or whatever, we're gonna find out which one is the longest string. And we're gonna set that to the widest so we know where are the boundaries left and right when we click inside of our, our menu. The next thing we're going to do, oh, this right here, var ls and var rs. So this is the left side of our menu and the right side of our menu. So we got a little bit of buffer here with this 30, um, and then we do a plus wide. All right, next thing we're going to do is draw the menu. Okay, so we're going to do a, a, a for loop, and 
for i equals zero. We start at zero, i is less than menu items. So um, our menu items is how many menus we have. So we're gonna loop through it that many times. And this rectangle right here, if point in rectangle, this rectangle, you see it has um, mx, my, which is we declared as our mouse x and our mouse y. Um, the left side here at our x1 position and then yy is our, our y side is our yy position minus the vertical space divided by three so this gives us a little bit of a buffer so that we can click inside um, where which whichever uh, menu item we're using and then we do the same thing here right side and then we go back down uh, yy plus vertical space divided by three and mouse C so if we're using our mouse then if our cursor does not equal I then we play a sound so as we're going up and down the menu with our mouse right here um, it's detecting which part which one of these uh, options that we're drawing that is in the rectangle that it's in so if it's not I then we're going to play a switch sound and our cursor is going to equal I. So I will equal to one of these menu items, 0 through 4. And our cursor is going to equal whichever menu item that is. So we can keep track of where we are in the menu. We're going to set our um, color to color 1, which was, if we go back over here, C gray. Our text is uh, menu I. So um, whichever so we're going to draw each of the menu items if cursor equals I so this is important if our cursor is the same as the menu that's being drawn currently then we're going to draw the selected menu as white so we know whichever menu item we're at so we know which one to select and then we're just going to draw all the menu items in a row and we're going to do YY plus equal VS so while I started it our AY which is our anchor Y and we're going for each loop we're, we're going vertical space down and then drawing that different item so I know for loops can get a little bit complicated but uh, if you're not familiar with it um, you know just copy this code will work uh, you can learn as you go and kind of figure out how this works but um, basically it just draws this array um, and detects where your uh, mouse is in that array um, and also if your cursor equals to whichever one is drawing currently then it'll draw that one as white so you know it's selected all right um, the last thing we're gonna do we're gonna check um, well I'll go ahead and paste this code and I'll explain it All right, so starting here, P up and P down. Okay, remember up here, P up and P down. This means our, we've pressed up or pressed down on keyboard, gamepad, wherever. We've already detected where the mouse, what the mouse is doing here. And now we're detecting what we're doing with the gamepad or keyboard. So if we go up, the cursor goes negative equals one. If we go down, the cursor goes positive equals one. And these are kind of clamps. These, these code right here are clamps for that. So um, cursor minus equals one <coughs> will go up. You know, you go minus equals one, four minus one is three, three minus one is two, cursor two plus one is three, and you go up and down like that. When you get to the end, it'll loop back around. Now action. Of course I've already said these are you know, like enter or you press a button or your left click so when you press action now that we've determined where our cursor is when you press action it's going to do a switch statement and in each of these cases 0 through 5 of our of our cursor position we're going to determine what happens when we press each of these so if it's a new game we'll put our new game code here 
If the next one's continue, we'll put that here. If the next one's options, we'll put that here, and so on and so forth. So forth. Um, and I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like, but I'm just gonna do a show message right here. And I'm gonna do cursor. All right, so over here in alarm event, we don't need anything. So this is just our thumbstick lockout. So when I run the game, I need to drop the uh, the menu. We need the menu. There we go. Okay, don't forget to drop your menu into your room. So this is what happens um, in our for loop. There are one, two, three, four menus. So it's um, detecting that vertical space um, and the, the rectangles are each here in that for loop. Now I'm gonna pick up the controller and use the controller. Um, there's no sound with that, so we'll have to add that sound in a minute and I'll show you how to do that. Um, let me go ahead and do that now. All right, so yeah, last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add this sound effects in here. So at the bottom, it's gonna put, if action, we're gonna play select. If P up or P down, we're gonna play that switch sound. So let's run this again. Now with the gamepad. And if I select something, it's gonna show me whichever cursor it's on. So yeah, so um, that does it for this this tutorial. Um, hope you found that useful. Hope you found it to be simple and and helpful. Um, and you know, it's good to have this this kind of uh, menu in your arsenal of of knowledge. That way, you can just get to making the game, throw the menu in there, um, not have to worry about your about a bunch of cluttered code. Um, and uh, make your game. So you guys have keep having fun making your games. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know what else you would like to do to know how to do. Um, and everybody have a good night.